Hello, my name is Rob Garner. I'm a computer programming instructor, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to model a character using Maya. So I already have my reference images in my scene, and I'm going to add a sphere. I want the sphere to be oriented vertically just because of the way this model is working, and uh, I think it's easier to do that from the top view. So I will click on this polygon and add it. And by default, this polygon has too many uh, subdivisions. So I, I want to reduce that. To reduce that, I'm going to pick the attribute editor, pick my sphere, and change my subdivisions to eight. That should be enough. I'm now going to switch to the front view and change the size and position of this sphere so that it's positioned where I want it. And by using Q or the QWER keys, I can switch between different tools quickly. And locate it where I want. In order to snap to the grid, I can press the X key. You notice so that it uh, presses, it shows the X here. And then this will snap to the center line. I want all my geometry to be precisely positioned on the center line, and then I can locate it approximately where I need to. Spacebar will allow me to switch views. I place my cursor on the view I want to look at, hit spacebar again, and now I can position it from the side view. So you can see how you having uh, these reference images helps. Unfortunately, this reference image looks like it's a little uh, too uh, wide. So what I'm going to do is go to my channel box editor and re-enable that. And let's see if we can make this image work a little better. Let's look at the UV planar mapping. And I probably want it to be more about like that. and scale at minus one to f reverse it. That's probably more what I want. And of course, the better your artwork is, the, um, the less you have to mess around with it later on. Um, in my case, I just quickly drew an image to demonstrate what we're doing. I disabled that uh, view again, and now we're back to working with our model. For some reason, it switched to face select mode. I want object mode, and the way you can get object mode or switch modes, of course, is by right clicking and then selecting either vertex, face, object mode, later we'll look at UV. We want to put the primitive in place, we'll use object mode. Once I have it approximately in place, now what I want to do is move these vertices around to get closer to what this, this the robot's head looks like. So I'm going to switch to face mode. And also I want to Looks like I have the wrong object selected.
Once I'm in face mode, I want to select one side of this and remove it. Make sure you're in face mode when you remove it. Watch what happens. If you're not, if you try to do this from, say, vertex mode, if you try to just remove these vertices and I hit and hit delete, you'll get a warning because the vertices are actually connected to the ones in the center line. And since you didn't select them, it says I can't delete half of them because there's a dependency between this vertex and that vertex. But if you select face select mode, now it's selecting the faces which has all those dependencies in it. And when you delete it, it'll work. And what this looks like now is I've got this half sphere and you can see that I have half of it. The reason why we're doing this is because it's easier to model one half and then copy it over to mirror it rather than trying to do all of this and keep it even on both sides. So there are many different, there are several different approaches to this. Um, this is one I like. Uh, you can probably find alternative methods that you may prefer. So now I'm going to switch. Well, we can probably do some of this in face select mode. I want this a little bit farther down. So I'm just going to try to start matching the geometry a little bit. I might use, I can use my, this cut tool. to add some additional geometry in here. And we can keep switching back and forth to kind of see how this is turning out. I might move some of this geometry forward. One of the tools we can use at this point to make it a little easier is something called soft select. So, I'm going to want to select my geometry. Make sure I'm in face select mode still. And if I move this, it can be a little bit tedious to move it all at once. So in order to avoid that, if I double click on the tool, I can open up this soft select mode and if I enable soft select and change its fall off radius you'll notice that the my model changes color and that governs what will be modified so what I'm doing here is I want I don't want to modify the top and by changing here this fall off radius I can make it so that the amount of influence that I'm going to posit that's going to occur when I move this will be related to the fall off radius and at least that gets me somewhat close I'm going to turn off soft select and go back. If I look from the front, it didn't modify here, but it modified on the side. And what I might do now is start working with the, the edge select mode. So if I go, if I use the edge select mode, I'm only selecting an edge. And again, I can use my scaling tools To, uh, to modify my scale, scale. And then if I double click on the tool again, I'm going to set its soft select settings so that since this is kind of an, a semi-organic shape, I want that in, I want to use the soft select so that it kind of keeps everything somewhat smooth. 
And if you run into difficulties, of course, Control Z is your friend. And we'll just kind of position things roughly where we want them. Eventually I can move into vertex mode and that gives you a little bit more precise control perhaps. And all I'm doing is trying to get this outline pretty wo well established. And that's probably good enough. And we can kind of see what it looks like here. So the next step is I want to get this eye slot in. I may I don't have eyeballs on this model. It's going to just to make it a little easier starting off. And I can see that I probably need a little bit more geometry here, so. I'm going to Use the slicing tool to add some more. Another useful tool is your Is your outliner. Not quite where I want it. I want it right here. So I'm going to place some geometry here. I'm going to need enough that I can make this slot and I need to move this line down so I'm going to switch to vertex mode and just kind of move things around to about where I want them. I also, because I need this slot to go in a little bit, 
I probably could use another loop here. I can do that again with this tool. I'm going to select the top here. And just kind of add another edge loop in. And let's see what that looks like in the perspective view. Is it too terrible? And then what I'm going to do is select the face select mode and select this face and just push it back to make this eye slide essentially. So you can do a lot of, of adjustment, but that's probably close enough for what we need to do for this tutorial. If I hit the Three key, I can see what this looks like once it gets smoothed. And that doesn't look too bad if I go back to one. I'm satisfied with that for now. Obviously, you could spend hours and hours getting all of this smoothed and to where you want it. But that's probably enough for this part. The next tool I'm going to use is I want to have uh, I need to make the neck for this uh, creature and I'm going to take these two and extrude them down when I put them together that'll make a f that'll make four and that will, should create some good geometry so I can to extrude I can select these two and hit the E key oh. wrong application. So I'm going to select these two and I want to do an extrude which is a control E. So control E and this will and for now I'll just extrude screw down. This is approximate. This is obviously the wrong angle, so I'm going to need to make some adjustments. And I also want to remove some of these faces. So this, these, this face, this face, this face. I want to reduce those. I don't want those selected. And when I hit the delete key, it'll remove them. And now I have my geometry. Oh, it looks like I accidentally removed something else. So you just hit control Z if you accidentally delete things and try again. So now I'm going to switch to my side view and I can't really see through this very well and I want to be able to see the image behind. So what I can do is go to shading and go to x-ray view and now I can see through it. And I want this neck to line up with that. Again, I can use my outline to make sure I've got selected what I want. I'm going to switch to vertex mode. Oh.
and just kind of line up these vertices. So if I select all of these vertices, I want them all on the same plane, so I will I'm going to snap to vertice and then bring it down. So what I did is I can move it with this arrow. If I hit the V key, then it puts the snap, it selects the, the, the snap mode for, to vertice. And I can just pick a vertice that's nearby let go and then just draw it down again to position these approximately where I want them. Again, I can use snap to vertice, take the grab handle, and I want to, if I lined it up, kind of don't want that. Um, another, if you're, if it doesn't snap them all in the same line, one of the things you may need to configure is set retaining component spacing on and off. If you have retained component spacing, then it won't, it, it'll keep the relative position of all, everything you have selected together. If you turn that off, what will happen is everything will snap to the same position. So in this case, when I have retained component spacing off, if I click vertices and pick a snap point, they all go to the same point, and I don't want that. So in this case, I want retain component spacing off. I hit the V, and it will, unfortunately, it's going to line up with the metal, but I can use that to kind of get them approximately in place, and then I probably have to go one by one. So that's lined up straight, that's lined up. I'm going to line this one up, again hit the V, line it up with the vertice in front of it. And let's see what we ended up with. I think I have some geometry which is a little off around the neck. Eh. So I probably want to move these two forward a little bit. I'll just select that, move it forward. And maybe I want to kind of position these so that it makes it a little rounder. And that's where we're at here. Now you can see that I've lost some alignment on my, along the center line and I can fix that. Well, it should, let's make sure first of all, yes, we do have these off of alignments. So I'm going to switch to my front view. I'm going to select all the vertices that should be on the center line. And I'm going to snap them to the grid. So pick the grid as a center line. And you see that they're in relative position, so that doesn't really do what I want. Again, I have to unclick retain component spacing. And then when I move it, I hold down the X, then grab, take the grab handle and position it. It'll snap along the center line.
I also don't want the neck to flare out here, so what I will do is take these and I want to snap them to those positions. Um, it's hard to see them right now, so, well, I suppose I could set shading in this view to X-ray, and then I will select these and again use the snap to vertice to set their vertical position or their horizontal positions. And let's see what I ended up with. It's always good to check in the perspective view. Put on three. Have it smooth and I can see it's probably coming down out okay. So I'm going to look at this in the side view and we'll notice that this is a little bit too too low and I want, and I have the body here so I want this to be I want the bottom of the neck to be up there so I can do that by selecting these and just moving them vertically to approximately where it needs to be. I think I have some, some of this probably needs to come up a little bit for the chin. And let's again see how that looked. And I think that's not bad. I have some things here that I could probably fix. Arguably, I might be able to remove the, some of these lines because they're not really needed. So I'm going to go to edge select mode if I can get there. And I think I'm going to remove And I think these I'm going to bring into the corner later. So let's just remove some of this unneeded geometry here. It will smooth it out. And I need to go into vertices. And notice, although I removed the lines, it still left these vertices in place. And you don't want to leave those behind. And that will smooth that out a little bit. And now what I want to do is move is merge these two together. The way I can do I can merge vertices is I can select this vertice and there's the merge and the target weld tool. I'm going to use the target weld tool to grab this and grab these vertices that should be moved. So now you can see it, I have this geometry kind of more concisely put together. Arguably, I don't need this line anymore. I probably just needed to do this little merge here. So I think I'm going to actually remove those lines. Sometimes you, you add things and then you realize I probably don't need them. So I'm going to take this out. And I don't really need that one or this one. And of course, I want to make sure I got rid of all these extra vertices as well. So 
make sure I'm not removing anything behind it. Nope. And notice I can't remove this vertice here because this line is depend on it. So I have to go to edge select, take that extra line out, and then I can get rid of that vertex. So that makes it a lot smoother. And it, and it removed some tries. The other reason you want clean geometry is potentially if you needed to use this as is and, and not have it smooth in your game, then this is going to be a lot better looking product than if, it w if you didn't have it smoothed out. So minimum of geometry possible and keep it as smooth as you can go. So that shows uh, how to do some basic modeling. We just modeled the head. The next step will be to model the body and the arms and everything else. Thank you very much.